Steve. Hey, this is Woodworking Masterclass. Oh, a day in the shed with Steve. And we've just hit the 40-day mark. Can you believe it? 40 days of straight. We go, we go another day, we've beaten Noah's record. Let me just pull the chat out here so I know what I'm doing, wherever it be. Oh, dearie dear. Uh, where is it? There we go. Oh, hello, Bob. Bob, you've already eaten. Bob is in the building. There you go. There you go, Bob, you're a star. You happy? Are you ha Wag your tail if you're happy. You happy, 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 happy. Oh, that's it. Nothing. Any good smells around? No, nah, nah, nothing to eat. That's it. I'm out of here, he says. That's, oops, it. Right one. I'll just get. Get. Where's my chat room gone? There we go. I got you all now. You can't hide from me. I don't want that one. I want that one. That's the one I want. You'd think I'd be good at setting this up by now, wouldn't you? No. Oh. Actually, I must admit, it was nice. I had breakfast in the house this morning and caught up on all my correspondence and meandered down here, and here I be now. So what have we got? Mike, you're early. Good on you. Have I got all that done? I think, oh, hang on, I might just do a quick, I might, I might, I might, let me see. Uh, what have we got here? I'll see if I can, I'll see if I'm good enough to tweet. Ah. Uh, there you go. I just tweeted. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. All right. We have Mike. G'day, mate. How you going? I hope you're enjoying the marketry because the work you're doing is absolutely lovely. So it's all good. And how are your students going? Are you, you um, still doing online teaching or is it... Getting back to normal, or have they all thrown the towel in? Oh dear, oh dear. G'day, Andy. How are you? I don't know how come I've got all of a sudden I've got reflection. What do you be call it? On this, perhaps I've moved the screen. I don't know. Because if I've got it up too high, you see the back of it. So it's down there at a different angle. Andy, good morning. Ray, good morning. Devon, good morning. Trevor, g'day, mate. Hi, oh, Jared. Morning. Chad, good morning. Max, a very good morning to you too. Clint, good day. Hope uh, everyone is doing well. And I do too. I hope everyone's getting along okay. And we're, that's bugging me, is it, in the middle? That's the way I've got it on. There you go. Um, I hope everyone's doing good. Looks like they're going to start with uh, the whatever. What? <laughs> Relaxing. Some laws here in Queensland, which will be will be nice, and we will see. Hello, I've just got a quick one before I get into the intro. No, I'll do the intros, then I'll get into it. Uh... G'day, Raul. Welcome to the workshop. Is that one a hula? Is that right? I'll, I'll try it again. Good morning, Prunella, queen of the moderators. Now, what was that movie? Something or other, Nella. I don't know. Um, it was some whacked out movie out in the desert somewhere. Yeah, anyway, someone will tell me. No, that's all right. I'm a bit behind. Good morning, Ian. How are you? Uh, no, no one. Mate, you'd all, you'd all be... No, you'd, you'd, you'd sack me after the... That's annoying. You'd, you'd sack me after the first term. I don't think I'd turn up for work anyway. I don't think any of them do. do no, anyway. <laughs> <coughs> dear, oh dear. Uh. You want to see how I build my vacuum bags? Okay, I've got a couple over there I'll show you. That's not a problem. G'day, Jeff. Um. 
Not a problem. No, it's good work, Mike. Good stuff. I've just got to go back and because I did a big jump there. Hey, Wombat, how are you, mate? Ian, I've said good day, do I think? Louise, hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do some plaster parish work today. Yay, she says. Morning, Brian. Devon, how would you sharpen a little cutting wheel on the Veritas marking gauge? Oh, that's easy. I'll show you how to do that. I've actually got some spare ones here so I can show you. Um, if I can find them. If and I can find them. Well, I might have used Oh, here we go, here we go. Look at this. Right next to me, number one. Whoops. I, I got some good stuff in there, I'll tell you. Oh, I know you've started something now. I can't shut my drawer. There we go. Okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's, let's, then we'll go around this way. Oh, they're, they're replacement wheels. Here you go. Replacement wheels for the Veritas marking gauges. But how you would sharpen them is, so I'm not taking mine off. You could actually, actually, you could leave it. That's, hey, that's good. I got ripped off. <laughs> There's nothing in there. How does that work? Oi, Simon. <laughs> I got ripped off. I, <laughs> I bought that. I've been keeping them for years and it's not in there. So, all right, well, well, we'll actually do it on the... We'll do it on the marking gauge. I wouldn't take the cutter off unless your screw is loose. But all it is is just simply, actually, what I'd make it. Oh, there it is. It felled it out. Oh, apologies, Simon. I found it. There it is. <laughs> I've dropped it on the floor. I'll never find it. Oh, dear. At least it didn't go in the bin. I'll have to get my... my <laughs> what? what a doofus. Dead set. This stream will be of Steve on the floor. If I can find my magnetic broom, I'll quickly give it a quick sweep. But if I can't, I'll... How, oh, there it is. Look at that. Someone put it back where it's meant to be. Oh, wonders will never cease. These are great. Um, big, big shop warehouse. Bunnings had these years ago. It's a big magnetic plate on the end of a broom handle and you just sort of go around floor best you can. I picked the nail up, wasn't what I was looking for. Another, I found two nails so far, but I haven't found my cutter. So evidently, it's good for finding stuff you don't want. Now, I'll find it later. I know it's on the floor. So what we'll do is just bring it above the cutter head. Oh, hang on, put the air conditioner on this. All of a sudden, it's starting to get warm. It's not warm until I start, and then all of a sudden, it gets warm. Boom, boom, boom. Put fan speed on auto. Oh. That should keep us going. Get a sharpening stone. And then just place it on the top. You can, if you want, we'll do it. A little bit of oil or whatever, like that. And then just 
Your stone's got to be flat though. Up and down and figure of eights. You would be better off actually holding it like that and tilting yourself forward. So I noticed just when I was doing that with my hand, I was rolling it. But if you just hold it in the one spot and lean, you've got a nice angle there. And if you have a look at that, you'll see where it's all shiny around the, around the top of the blade, right on the edge. It's got a silver, silvery bit. There you go. And that's now sharp. That's all it takes. And if you've got an overlocker and the cutters on the overlocker aren't cutting, just take them off. Same thing. Put the flat side, not the bevel side, the flat side on a stone and just do exactly that and bingo. Your cutters on your overlocker will be sharpened. Susie reckons I'm a genius when I do that. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Mystery of the cutter. So question one answered. I hope that works. Well, it will work. Um, no, I guess online they're closed. It's closed for the year. Wow. I'll show you how to do the vacuum bags. I'm going to turn that blinking air con up because it is not doing a darn thing for me. There we go. Uh, um, way over due to a crash. So my clothes, well, you're just hanging there for as long as you can, Prunella. Hey, Dennis, how are you? Thanks for coming in. And I'll just big jump again then. <coughs> Yeah, it was the Queen of the Desert. Was it Prunella? Queen of the Desert? I can't remember. Barbarella. Hey, that was a good one. I remember that. Jane Fonda. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, Ruth is there too. Oh, g'day, Ruth. How you going? See if you can stay awake for a bit. Have a hot chocolate. Um, ba -dum -bum. <laughs> Priscilla, that was the one. Priscilla, see how much of an impact that movie made me on made on me, Trevor? Never watched it. Couldn't be bothered. Ray, apparently you shouldn't put your hands inside a plaster of Paris while it's setting. It can, <laughs> hasn't happened yet. How do they go putting your leg in when you're getting a, a leg plaster, when you're breaking your leg? That'd be terrible when you take your cast off and your legs disappeared. <laughs> Thanks, Max. It's under my head. Oh, yeah. I found it then. I should have been watching then. I've lost it now. I've got a magnet. That didn't work. Mm. Oh, it starts off well and it just gets worse, Andy. No, don't want to keep the floor clean. Takes the fun out of it. <whistles> Ryan, we were out there with, oh, Cooper Petey, there you go. That's where you live underground. Look at a motel underground carved out of the, the opal area. Good stuff. Never been to Cooper Petey. I've been prospecting up at Lightning Ridge, home of the black opal. <whistles> hey, Reginald, how are you? Applehash, g'day. <laughs> yeah. Do you really think that it help, Applehash? Hang on. I'll show you. Here we go. We're going floor cam here now. We're going floor cam. 
Now, don't really think that is an option. I like the idea in principle, but no. We'll find it. It'll, it'll turn up. But, but I like the thought, Apple Hash. I like the thought. <laughs> oh, it's all right, Devin. I'll let you off. Yeah, I wait until I drop at least six things before I go down the floor to pick it up. Make it worth my while. Still good weather in the head shed? Yep, hasn't moved. Very, my, my barometer goes up and down, but that's, that's the only one. Good morning, Earl. Please, would you remind me the make of those hand saws hanging up? These ones here, these blonde handle ones, are Lee Nilsson. Um, and then the other ones are just really old ones. Oh, I've got a couple of PAX ones on the side as well. So the blonde ones are Lee Nilsson and these ones are PAX. That's uh, that big sucker up there. She's no name. Uh, that's a Stanley, I think, that big back saw. And, yeah, that's a Lee Nelson. And then I've got a couple of Vermonts and Distons up in the other shed. If that helps. Hey, Tom, how are you? So this is rude that I looked at. Hi, Tom, how are you? Good day, Tom. How are you, mate? Hey, John. Dean, good day. Lee Nelson's, that's the one. Lee, uh, Tom's apparently, they've closed the factory down at the moment. Um, I know Anthony in Australia's got some stock, but how much I don't know. Mike Casey, would you give us a rundown on what type and number of planes you have? Oh, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start at the top or the bottom? Do you want the highest number or the lowest number? G'day, Randy. How are you? Off to buy more tools in the sleep. Good on you, Apple Hash. Thanks for dropping in. No dramas. Ah. Uh. Okay, bottom, bottom, okay. Here we go, I'll line them up. This is a number one which you can't get anymore because they stopped making them about 1945, I think. So let's go that one. There is so much mystique about the poor old number one, but... Um, it's one of those things, they're nice. They're great for detail work. They don't have a lateral, which is one of the strange things, but I don't know where you'd fit it in. But anyway, that's the number one. Oh, this is the number two, which still has the Stanley sticker on. I reckon that's about 1930s, 1920s maybe. It does have a lateral lever on it, and that I use quite a bit on box making, for making boxes. Then you've got a number three. This is a Lee Nelson ductile bronze. And that is my sort of workhorse for furniture for smoothing. Um, I use a number three. That's a number four. I rarely use those. This one actually has been designated, let me go this way. This has been designated as um, a hogging plane, so as you can tell, it's, it's pretty rough, but it does the next cut after a scrub plane. I'll show you a scrub plane in a little bit. 
Then you've got a five and a quarter, which is also known as a junior jack. When I went to school, that was the everyday plane that you had at the workbench called the junior jack. And it's a nice plane. It's the width of a number three, but it's longer than a number four. Very nice plane to use, that one. Then you got the bog standard um, five. There is a four and a half, and the four and a half is over there in the benches, but I never use it, so I don't bring it out. That's a corrugated sole. That's meant to be used on greasy timber. I don't personally like corrugated soles, but that's the number five. This is what they have in schools nowadays. This is a five and a half. This is an Australian plane. This is a Turner, which is a really nice plane. Got a nice bit of weight to it. And it's a bit of, bit of a workhorse for me too for if I'm doing short boards and I want to square them, flatten them or shoot them, I'll use a five and a half. Then I don't think these are made anymore either. These are a number six. This is oh, it'll be a, um, a four plane, I guess, would what they use it. I like them as um, lady number sevens because they'll do the job as a number seven, but they don't have the weight of a number seven. And I don't know if anyone's making those anymore. They might be, I don't know. Then we've got the number seven, which is the true workhorse of my workshop anyway. It flattens nearly all the boards and shoots them. That's a triplane. Or a, oh, look, I call it a shooting plane, but some people get a bit pedantic. Oh, it's not a shooting plane. Yeah, well, I'll show you what a shooting plane is in a moment. But <clears throat> that's technically a triplane. That's a number seven. <clears throat> then we've got the big granddaddy of them all. This is a Lee Nelson. Number eight, I do have a Stanley number eight, but I much prefer the Lee Nelson. It's got an extra two pounds of weight in it. This comes in at 10 pounds. The normal Stanley number eight comes in at eight pounds. Likewise, which is interesting, the number seven comes in at seven pounds. The number six comes in at six pounds. Number fives are a bit weird. Number four comes in at four pounds, number three at three pounds, number two at two pounds, and number one at one pound. Um, this is a shooting plane, and it's used on a shooting board. This is a Veritas one, so it's slightly different. It's also, no, it's a right-handed one this time. You can get left-handed ones. It's got a movable mouth, and it's to be used on a shooting board, or you can actually use it flat like that and use it as a smoothing plane. Very, very heavy, good value. Uh, this is a scrub plane. I think it's a 40, Stanley number 40, but this is a Veritas version. And if you have a look at that blade, she's chunky. It rips stuff out an eighth of an inch at a time without any dramas whatsoever. Oh, this is a 010 or a Stanley number 10. This is a record version. It's a rebate plane, and as you can tell, the plane iron goes from here to here, so you can go right through and do a complete rebate. I very, very seldom use that one. What else have we got? Oh, and this is a, whoop. And this is a compass plane for doing internal and external radiuses or radii. So by twirling this knob here, you can either get the blade to go convex, which is for internal surfaces, or alternatively, for li -li 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 -li, you go the other way, it'll give you a concave blade, which is for external surfaces. Used in uh, bow front cabinet work, uh, wheel right stuff and bits and pieces like that and then i move on to the other planes which are terry gordon's oh hang on there's a is a bog standard stanley block plane which i used for many 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 years it's an 060 it's got an adjustable mouth it's got laterals at the back 
and lay setting wheel. So there you go. And then I've got spoke shaves and routers and all sorts of other bits and pieces. You can tell, but I've got to put them all back now. Who needs to join the gym when you get to do this? Oh dear. And then that's a dovetail plane, that's a toothing plane. So it just, it depends, but it's, it's nice to have them because then you've got the right tool for the job and every single one of them is sharp and ready for action. Because there's nothing more disappointing than being in the zone of a job, getting all excited, reaching for a plane and then realising that it's not set or the blade's got a chip in it or whatever reason. And a four and a half, it's the same length as a four and it's the width of a number five. And I've got two over there, I think. This is my number one, I'll put that back away. I used to use them until I found out how much they were worth. <laughs> Now it's just a conversation piece and it does allow me to say I have got a full set of planes. In fact, I do have them all in Stanley, but I prefer using the ones I've got behind me. So I hope that helped. Who wanted that? Ah, ba ba da ba da ba da ba da Oh, okay. Mike, was that you that wanted to know that? Yes, there you go. Well, I hope that helps, Mike. That's got that sorted. What? Tom Burton, why don't you have a Rob Crosman? Of course, I haven't got one. I've got one, two, two, three Paxes and the Lee Nelson and a larger Pax. That's all I seem to need. <laughs> Most of them are all old ones too, Mike. They're not new. Oh, the Lee Nelsons are, obviously. <clears throat> oh, if you want, if you want cute little planes, here we go. We'll do Where are we? Here we go. You, you want cute little ones? These, these are cute little ones. That's a Veritas. That's my thumb behind it to give you an indication. That's a Veritas um, router plane. That's a Veritas rebate plane. They all work. That's a violin maker's plane. And that's a shooting, angle shooting plane. And that's a scoop, spir, sw, yeah, pah, scooped, sp, I'll say it in a minute, scooped squirrel tail plane. I used to use that when I was having a crack at making musical instruments that you all used to get used. But now, not so much. So when I pop me clogs, keep your eye on eBay because I'm sure the kids are going to ah, stick it on eBay. That, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to new. Anyway. I think today's the draw. I think you're right. Um, well, if Terry rings me, because he, he wrote it in his calendar, so we will see. Yeah, I, Derek, g'day, Derek. I wanted to get a full set of um, turners, but oh, I just saw how many planes you need and why. I think Dave Stanton's got a full set. He bought, um, he bought, was it number four or number five? <coughs> from a mate of mine, he rang me up and said, are you interested in these planes? 
And I said, no, I'm not really. He said, can you put a price on it? So I didn't. I told him how much the turn it was worth. He said, really? He put it up in Dave Stanton board. G'day, Dave, if you're watching. <coughs> have you any tools that you have inherited that every time you use it, you think of the person who was got? Yeah, I do, actually. I've got... Um, I don't even know where it is. It was one we... We did one up not long ago. This is ridiculous, though. It's the same as... You know, let me just see if I can... If I can find it. If not, it doesn't matter. Oh, dear. No, I can't seem to get me hand on it. Oh, dear. There you go, that's, um, oh, that's a four and a half. Ugly, clunky looking thing. I got, some people love them. I don't. I think that's a, see, you can tell I don't use it very often. And I've got um, Carter planes over there and anchors and crunts and might be a Miller's Fall over there. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of bits and pieces. But no, the, the plane that I had was a number four. It was my dad's. And um, it, it was a dog. It was a record body and a Stanley frog. And I don't know about the handle. I'd say it was a, a record handle because it was a light colour one. Uh, the body broke, so I got a Stanley body for it. But the handle's on it and it's got paint on it. And I can remember I would have been, oh, 12 when Dad was doing the house up and he bought this plane and he only had one arm, my dad, and so he never used it properly. It was just going like that and he'd have paint on his hands and, yeah, that I do. I get, uh, get a bit of sentiment out of that. That's one plane that I'd never sell or throw away, mainly because of the handle, um, I think, more than anything else. I did get his typewriter too. But that's sort of gone. I think the kids decided they'd see if they could pull it apart when they were young and it never got back together. Because he was an author or scriptwriter, movie writer, whatever you want to call it. Ah, yeah, I, number sixes are very, very nice. I've got to tell you, I like them. I know I'm way behind the chat. You're a professional buyer, Dean. Uh, yeah, 45s are okay. You've seen... Oh, here's mine here. Oh, I think. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Mine's in, mine's in really good nick. I, um, where I used to have my school, there was an airline pilot that rented a shed near mine and he was cleaning his stuff out and he came in one day and he says, here, yeah, mate, you might as well have it. I'll never use it. And I thought, well, I'll never use it either. But I do, I do. And I did have a, um, a 50, which had a wooden handle on it. And I also had the Record 050, which is a copy of the 50, only it was all metal. But I've since sold those, along with other things, just to get rid of them. Oh, yeah, no, Turner's a nice dairy. I think it's that red acrylic handle that sort of brings it apart. Gay Panda, you're fidgety today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I reckon my number one will be on eBay before I'm cold, mate. Okay, we're up to date. Look at that. Ha, huh, all right. Now. Um, what I did yesterday was... Oh, that's right, I was going to have a bit of, Not a rant, but just an observation. The ridiculousness and inconsistencies of what's going on. And I don't want to start a, a chat up, but it just occurred to me yesterday. I had to go to, to Coles to get some essentials, biscuits. And they got these big spit guards up and everything's... And, they, and that's fine. I understand you've got to be safe. You've got to have precautions. Big things. This is how we're going to do this, this and this. Um, these guards are for your protection and the protection of our, you know, staff, which is fine. Please pack your own groceries, which is fine. 
And where possible, please use plastic to pay for your purchases and minimise the amount of cash. Terrific. No dramas. Went in, go to pay for it. What's the first thing they ask you? Oh, do you want to cash out? <laughs> I just, it just, I had to go and buy two packets of biscuits because it just did it for me. Um, <laughs> where's my box lid? I've lost my box lid. What I did yesterday was, through the box lid, no, there it is, look at that. I um, glued the oval in. Now, the way you glue the oval in is you sticky tape it on top and then you go around with a knife you follow that shape and then you just take it all out. Whether you use a router, if you do, make sure you cut to the right depth or you can be in deep doo-doos. You could use a hand router or you can just get under there with a knife and flick the bits of veneer off. The beautiful thing with working with high glue, you can flick it off with the knife quite easily. What I'm going to do here before I take that off is, to me anyway, it looks a bit unfinished. When you've got a box and you've got this oval in there and it's just, you know, it's flat. So what I want to do is actually put a ring. What am I showing that camera? Would you smack you one of these? Eh? Is put a ring of a complementary colour on the outside, just the thickness of a veneer, so 0 0.5, 0 0.7 of a mil. And what I've chosen is um, Tasmanian myrtle. The reason I chose that over Chilean myrtle is because it's stronger. But I do have concerns. So I don't know if it's going to be long enough. And if not, oh, we'll have to try something else. So let's start cutting this up. I'm so looking forward to um, tidying my workshop up. We might go on to that one, see where that one goes. There you go. There we go. And again, don't rush it. Just keep on going until it's cut. It's a little over the pressure of the weight of the knife. So I'm not pushing down hard on it. I'm just stroking it all the way through. Now, let's see if this is going to be... Oh, we're going to have to need two... Oh, look at that. We can do it. Okay. Go in the bin. So I'm going to cut a bit. Maybe two mil wide. Three mil wide. I don't know. Just gently stroke it all the way through. Uh, what I did for the dog too, I thought, just for the fun of it, one of those um, expression lines I had to put in, I did one with putty and I actually inlaid ebony into another one. I don't think you can tell the difference, but I just thought I'd do it because I can. Or should I be more precise and say, I did it to see if I could. And I did. Okay. So there's a nice thin piece of veneer. Let's pop this bit over there for the moment. So now what I've got to do is cut around this circle. I'm going to go all cams here. Cut around here, 0.7 of a millimetre to the depth of the substrate and then bend this and we will incise it. And you'd be surprised at the difference that makes in presentation. So, how do you do that? Well, you've already got one cut there because... You've gone around 
and cut around the oval. So you've got that gap there already. But how do you get 0.7 of a mil? Well, I'll show you. Let's get this sticky tape off. And I made sure I got all the sticky tape off the other side too before we did it. Ba -boom. So what I did, I've made a couple of specialty tools. And one is this little fella. And yes, isn't that amazing? It looks like that. However, big difference, it's got two blades in it. I don't know if you can see that. But I've got two blades side by side. And the gap between those two blades just happens to be the width of the veneer. So what I'll do is I'll clean that up. It's a bit gunky. And then to clean it out, I've made another tool, which is out of an old hacksaw blade. So what I'll do, I'll go around here first with this two-bladed knife. Then I'll go around with this hacksaw blade with a hook in it. And I clean out the groove that this knife is going to leave. Then we put in this stuff. So here we go. Isn't that marvellous? I had I did. I had a non-slip mat here at one stage. But it seems to have gone the way the dodo -do bird. All right, change my glasses over. Ooh. Been looking forward to when the glass optometrists open up and then I can get my glasses readjusted. Okay, so this... First, the inside blade goes into that groove between the motif you put in there and the box. Whoops. Don't you, don't you love that word, whoops? Just very carefully do it because don't forget you're cutting two blades with two blades at the same time. And sometimes it gets bogged up in the middle like that. You could just as easy, I suppose make a blade that thickness with only one blade. Oh, I don't know. I've been doing this, this this way for 10, 20, 25 years or so. That's how old this knife is. Um, I did use high glue to put this in. What I'm going to do with this, when I put this in the only because I'm streaming, I'm going to use PVA because it's quicker and then we can, once it's dry, we can um, scrape it off or sand it off. It doesn't matter which way you go. And we'll reveal... Ah! the uh, marquetry that we did underneath. Now, when you come to corners, I'm going here, so I've got a tight corner here. Rather than continue to do that, because if I miss or it jumps, I'm going to scratch the box. I'll go around the other way and then pull in this way. And then if I do miss, I'm going to scratch the top, which does have a bit of protective paper over it.
and keep that clean or else you, you can actually spread the blades apart, which isn't good. Because then your gap's going to be bigger than you want. The other, other challenge I've got here, so I've got Koto veneer, which is really soft, which is the white stuff, and it cuts through there really easily. And then the black stuff's ebony, and that's pretty tough. So, you know, you've got a lot of pressure on there to cut through the ebony, and then all of a sudden you go through it in the Koto, you... Blade can jump, which isn't desirable. Well, I think we're nearly halfway there. I was going to film me putting it in last night and then I came down here and yeah, Pink Floyd was happening on Amazon so I didn't want to infringe copyright so you dip out. But I enjoyed it. I guess the other thing I'm hoping, apart from the fact if you're enjoying it, is you maybe get a better understanding or appreciation of how much time it actually takes to do stuff like this. And yes, I'm sure a CNC could do it a lot quicker. Get the right knife, Noddy. Hey mate, how are you? Uh, good, Steve. How are you? I I am extraordinarily well, and I, and I welcome an interruption. I'm just doing a little bit of marketry, which is doing me head in. Oh right, okay. Well, that's good. I've got an announcement of the winner of the three hundred dollar. Oh, there you. Someone just said, "Oh, today's going to be the day," and I said, "Yeah, if Terry rings me." But yeah, well, there you go. Who won? Drum roll. Okay. It was Maxwell Murray. From Victoria. <laughs> Max, did you hear that? I'll, I'll see if I get a message back. I think he's on, actually. All oh, right. There you go. There's Max. About 100 uh, people entered. So we saw, sent out quite a few catalogues, which is good. Yeah. Um, so I thank people that 
percent of the competition and um, support our tools. That's all good. Well, there you go, Max. Oh, that is what no, he hasn't even noticed yet. He's talking to someone. Everyone else is going, congratulations, Max. So what, um, you just send them an email? Uh, if Max wants to just contact us with what he would like to spend his money on and we can work it out, um, you know, if he wants to get something more expensive or whatever, um, yeah. he can add a bit to it or just take a tool worth that value. Uh, or take, take us out to lunch. Yeah. <laughs> He's... You have to do a trip to Victoria, and I don't think um, they're going to let you in down there. Oh, that's true. That's all right. I, Max has just come on. You little ripper. There you go. <laughs> all right, Daryl. Thanks for that, mate. I appreciate that. No worries. I'll let you get back to your mark marketry. Oh, no, you're good on you, uh, Maxwell. <laughs> all right, Terry. Thanks, mate. Bye. Nice see you. Bye. So there you go, Max. You're you're in. You're the you're the, 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 the man. Um, if you give Terry a ring, uh, I won't give you his number, but... Oh, hang on, yeah, I'll give you his uh, factory number, which is... He did, did he just ring me from... Terry, where are you? <whistles> no, that was his mobile. I don't want his mobile, I want his factory. Oh. Okay, here we go. Where's the... Oh, two, six, six, two, eight, seven, one, two, three. There you go, Max. Give him a buzz at your leisure. And good on you. That's lovely. <coughs> and thanks, thanks Terry, for, for doing that too. I appreciate that. Ah, well, that's it. <sighs> Excitement gone. Well, we'll, um, we'll see if we can do something else later on. Uh. Where did we get any? <coughs> uh, no, no, no. Prunella's off. Wes, what's going on with Wes? Hey, Wolfie! And, 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 and Wes? Whoops. Whatever it is, mate, I certainly hope it, it works out on the better side of good for you, Wes. <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll find the blade later, I'm sure. I don't know where Mrs. H has gone. Yeah, I reckon lunch. No, lunch is on. I, I reckon Max can kick the tin for lunch now. I should make say you got to come up and pick it up, and then you can take me to lunch. Ah, <laughs> uh, good on you, Max. Whatever you fancy, doesn't matter which, what you get, it's going to be good. I've got to change my change my glasses so I can continue to look. Ah. Didn't want that one. <whistles> okay, again, I'm going to change direction here. Because I'm coming around a sharp corner and if I'm not careful I'm gonna run off oh I'm gonna ring the missus up 
In a minute, we'll find out what's going on. Oh, got one quadrant to do. Whoops. Downhill run now. Drawing this up. Okay. So if you can see now I've gone all the way around with that double edge tool. Now it's getting this tool and hooking all that waste out. When it's out, <laughs> it should then be wide enough. <clears throat> oh, I know what I've got to do. So I've got to <clears throat> um, release the second episode on Vimeo, which I will do this afternoon and give you the appropriate links tomorrow if you want to download it. Can you see what I'm doing so far? It's just hooking all this stuff out so I get a nice clean <clears throat> piece for this to go into. I'd have to go over a couple of bits like I just did then that hasn't cut through.
I think. That, oh no it's not. I thought that was it. But again, I only thought it was. Dunsky. Okay. Uh. Doesn't matter if you go a bit deeper than you need to because in this case, you're better off to go too deep than not deep enough. All right. Now we... See if it'll go in. As soon as you do that, you find pieces you've left in there. do to where there's a join because there obviously has to be a join here I don't put it in an obvious place I'll either put it at eight o'clock or four o'clock because then your eye isn't drawn to it you shouldn't really see it but uh, oh, you know how the best blade plans so we might start at about there here the other thing you got to be mindful when you do this you have to have a veneer that will be able to be bent it's no good trying um, say eucalypt or something like that that's got no given it at all because this one isn't too bad because it's uh, quite a big circle but if it's a tight circle and it's got no give you're going to be in a world of pain because it will keep breaking every time you come to a corner
All right. So now I need, I need a pair of scissors. And a pencil. <coughs> Says he, hopefully. We might go from there to there. It'd be pretty close, I reckon. and put a scarf cut or scarf joint in here. I want that to go over the top. So we put this here like that. It's a scarf joint or part of it. And then this one here Make sure I get cut the right side or I'm going to be in doo-doos. Okay. So I'll cut from here to here. Okay. So that joint now, the two pointed ends, when it comes around, they will marry up with each other. Oh, let me have a chat before I do that. It's like brain surgery, that. Oh, change me. Change me eyeballs. <whistles> See you, Dean. Oh, there we go. I thought I lost everything. Bum, 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 bum. Bum. Okay. With oh, hello. I was going to ring you up. I thought you might have got lost. Yeah, Did you get tangled up in the bed sheets? Yeah, <laughs> How you going? I'm going. Oh, you're going to bring down what I... What I mentioned last night, because I reckon these are great. Susie's sewing segment. It's fairly clean down there. I'm just Max one, Max one the uh, Terry's. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, yeah. Well, it's nice. Um, <laughs> you never won anything before. <laughs> Look at, well, there you go, Max. Um, too far gone down here. Bum -ba -dum. This is all. Oh no, I, I don't know what I was looking at. It was all weird. But this, gents may all be safe as well. May great win possibly in the next or two weekend. Compare notes. There you go. Good night, good night, Dean. Have a good night. <laughs> I'm a, I, I had some cigars once and I don't smoke, but I smoked those, <laughs> didn't I? Yeah. I? I actually drove, we were living on the Gold Coast, I had my little MX-5 roof down and I smoked the cigar and I was able to smoke it all the way up to Brisbane, turn around and come all the way back and I still had left some left for me son to finish. 
So he jumped in the car and he went and smoked it, didn't he? He did. <laughs> there you go. Ah. Oh. Da -dum -ba -dum -bum. Okay. Here we go. G'day, Sue. Hi, Sue. Hi, Sue. Just say hello. Hello, everybody. They're, they're all so nice to you. They don't know you, do they? No, they don't, do they? <laughs> This, anyway, this is Susie, what she was doing yesterday. I reckon, I reckon it's chiffic because it's for, are they, we, we should, should I, I'll ring them up. Oh, I mean, he's at work, isn't he? He's at work. She isn't. No, she isn't. Oh. She's seen them, though. Oh, is she? Yeah. Oh, well, don't worry about it then. Look at this, Susie's been making, because we've got another little grandchildren coming up. So Susie's been making these. Here we go. This is your taxi. There's going to be Nan's taxi. What else yes. you got? Little, little. One little. Little suit. suit. Well, there we go. There you go. And this one says, I'm very oh, special. Oh, look at that. Suki Lala. Look at that. Oh, baby. They're all embroidered, aren't they? Yes. You embroider them straight onto the T-shirt. I do. Just call me pedantic, but there's a thread there. Oh, okay. It's the only time we'll put a knife near it. Yeah, well, there's a few little threads. Oh, that's that, all right. Not, can't do much about that's that. That's a scared elephant that's afraid. Yeah, it's afraid. <laughs> it's afraid. Ah, look, isn't that just the cutest little thing? There you go, spoilt bub. So, we've only got nine months to go. <laughs> Six, anyway. <laughs> oh, really? There you go. Well, better have your bed finished so we can put it on the bed and he can walk around there. She can walk, he can walk around. Mum and Dad don't know yet whether it's a boy or a girl. Oh, well, you're going to say Mum and Dad don't know they're having a baby yet. No, they know it's that. It's mail order. Mum wants a girl, Dad wants a boy. Mm, I don't care, providing it comes down the shed and can tie the app after me. Well, that's right. That's it. The, the dangle joint you just used in the edging. Is that called? Cool? That's the scarf joint. Scarf joint, James. I know there is a term, but I only have two brain cells working this morning. Tell you what, you're 50 over 100% on me. Everyone is now glued to the TV. Well, there you go. See, you come out here, you make you something and embroider your name on it, wouldn't you? Yep. Because then you're a good woman. <laughs> I, I do. Oh. I'm going to now try and do a onesie for the baby. Oh, I'm pleased you're not doing the number twosie. <laughs> Oh, not that sort of onesie. <laughs> oh, oh, all right then. Tony's not on, but she went for a BRB yesterday and I got there confused. Go. Apparently it means back real soon or something yeah. or other. Be right back. Yeah. And I thought it meant something else. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, thank you, Max. Oh, yeah, read that comment. Yeah. There's all these comments once she picks up on Max. You're an angel and very talented. Do you want me to open the roller door so you can get out and go? <laughs> so, no, nah, you're good. Don't look at me in that evil voice. Do you know, I've seen that look before. I just went and bought the wrap bags, um, croissants and donuts. I bought them biscuits yesterday. Yeah. They just, yeah. aren't they? I saw some the other day on Facebook. When, you, when all this is over, you've got three choices. You can be a hunk, you can be a chunk, or you can be a drunk. <laughs> or they're going to be uh, junks, they're be hunks, hunks, bunks. bunks. No, bulk, what is it? Bulk. Bulks. Bulk hunks. That'll do. Mm. Yeah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Croissants, Croissants yeah. yeah. Mm. Tell you what, they don't want for much. No, they don't want for much at all, except to kick up the back. Yeah, well, I, every time I want to do that, you won't let me. Yeah, I'm going to flog them. No, you can't. It's from me. It's all right. Oh, oh, it's funny. Yesterday, last night, doing <laughs> Sue and I were roughhousing as we normally do around the place. And nine o'clock, went to put the kids to bed. And Noah said something. I forget what it was. Anyway, I said, you keep that up. I'm going to thump your nan or something. And then Susie said, yeah, be careful I don't thump you. I said, yeah, you want to get a stool to stand on first. Well, Noah just lost it. Didn't he need peed himself. He just thought that was the funniest thing. So Susie went to the pantry, got a stool Maybe out, stool. stood on it and thumped me. <laughs> there you go. I like a determined woman. Absolutely. That's good. Ah, <sighs> this suck. All right. All right. Go back and do some work.
Who? You? I'm going to do oh, some All right, you go and do some work. I'm going to put this in. There's a, there's a dog underneath there. <laughs> there is. I haven't seen mine anywhere. I don't know where he is. Oh, he wouldn't be far away. Oh, okay. Yeah, scarf. All right, Chucky. Thanks for that. See ya. Uh, yeah, James, a scarf joint. They use on guitar necks to get that kink. Now, I'm talking about. I'm, that, it's, it's got, Bugs Bunny's got nothing on her. Um, <laughs> yeah, so a lap joint. I mean, you could call it a lap joint. doesn't really matter. Um, it laps over the top of it. But generally, a lap joint is a square joint on a square joint. So... Uh, there, you've got half a tenon and half a mortise, and that can be a lap joint. Anyway, let's see how we're going to go with this. I don't know because I don't know. So we'll have to see if I can get this done. Oh, which one will I use? Can I use that one? That's that one, isn't it? Oh, there you go. Look at that. Okay. So a little bit of glue and we just push it right down into, that's not going to, that's going to be taking me too long. I might have to do it this way. There were newspaper on the top so it doesn't matter. But I want to push that glue right down into that crevice or rebate or slot or thing we just cut out. Yeah, it's just this glue goes off very, very quickly. That's the reason I'm doing it. So we can do that and we can take the top off. Get all the excess glue going onto the paper. And not the other part of the job would be good. A bit of rubbish just went down there. And I don't, don't even have any strong glasses on I saw that. Okay. Um, bum, 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 bum. Oh, dear. Just I wipe that excess glue off the veneer. Now that's <laughs> that's just created another problem because I've now wet it which means the sticky tape won't, won't hold. Oh, it's just, that's all wood. Someone said that on stream the other day, I think. All woodworking, woodworking is, is problem solving. And I think you're pretty right there. Okay. So now... We'll just, I'm going to have this join up here somewhere. Don't want it on a, on a, a sharp curve, but a little bit of a curve is all right. Oh. There we go. Push it in nice and deep, as deep as it'll go. 
you're just basically putting hold down strips on it just to stop it from jumping out. And here we go, these bits here now have to line up. Little bit of glue on the strip. The, the joining strip, just a little bit, just put that along there, whoop, get in there. And that should, should, there's that word again, should stay in there. Just give that, what have we got, half hour, maybe, to dry. Should be dry in 10 minutes with this stuff. But now she's, she's done with the camera. And there you go. So now we've got this border. In all the way around, it's not in there because it's just jumped out. And you would be absolutely amazed at what impact that little bit of veneer has on the finished job. It really gives it presence. If you've just got the oval in there, it doesn't look finished. Whereas if you do this, it's a beautiful way of blending the top and the motif together. So we'll just put that to one side. And if I can find, if I can find the cornflakes packet or something like that. We can start filling out the, um, putting a bottom in there. So I don't know, we might even just, I don't know. Oh, here we go. I haven't given it that much thought to lining it, so we can look at lining it, I guess. Don't throw old cornflakes packets away. They're, they're good value. They're good for lining boxes. It's a good cardboard in there. Nice and stiff. And there's a generous amount of it. So first thing first. We'll cut out... Um, a template for the bottom.
hopefully that's it. Going to line this with leather. But I haven't yet decided how. Okay, now that's the size of the box, which is obviously too big for the inside. So now we measure this size here, and we'll take that off the, all the way around. Um, let's see if I can find a bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of veneer that thickness. A little bit of timber that thickness, which would be really handy. What about this one here? No. Um, actually, that that might well do. Because You want it smaller than the inside of the box. Because you've got to allow for the thickness of the material you're going to use. Ah. And what's up? This one off here. And that will fit in there quite nicely. So I've got to have sides in there as well, and also the thickness of the leather itself to go around. So that is not a bad size. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I could put leather don't know. Let me think, let me have a chat. Uh, last time I used a cornflakes box I Yeah mate <laughs> the old cardboard boxes, I, I've done it with the kids. Um, I remember we had a thermostat go on one of the cars once. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, you need a gasket. Oh, you can't. The shops are shut. This, that, and the other. What are we going to do? I said, we'll go and get a cereal box from the pantry. Well, why? I said, I'll show you. Pulled it out, got the old ball paint hammer, smacked a gasket out. To this day, it's still in the car. Oh, hang on. Thanks, Max. Let me have a look. Yeah, um, 
Down the one there, I'll just go and check on this one. Check on this one. Whoop. Yep, two on that one. So what I'll do, we'll do this stream today and then tomorrow morning I'll put new new batteries in and we'll be good to go. The high good oh that's quite yeah my um uh what do you call it? Induction heaters had the fritz. It uh, it works, but the thermostat doesn't work and I'm boiling high glue, which is not good for high glue. Uh, the, yeah, the reason I use PVA there, not high glue, Brian, is because I want to actually finish it and take the top off in this stream, and that's going to dry a lot quicker. Whereas if I did high glue, we wouldn't be doing it till tomorrow. So that is why. Uh, no, it wouldn't be. Um, it's no dramas at all. You just whack the high glue, and I would prefer to have used high glue, but it doesn't matter. <clears throat> oh, Mike, all right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was a tongue-in-cheek poke at me, wasn't it? Okay, I'll see if I can find a really old one that I've made and I'll show you. Oh! Here, here, this is a really old one. But it works. Oh! So what, I'll see if I can, that's got to be, Maybe a quarter of a millimetre or something, I don't know. Oh. Okay, that's half a mil thick, which is... Ba -boom. The 16th, about a 32nd of an inch, or might be 32nd of an yeah, 30 seconds of an inch thick plastic I got from uh, Bunnings, a big box hardware shop around here. I've obviously used something else in it because I've cut it to bits. And all I did was... Just cheap. This is the first one. I'll show you the other one I did later on. This is just cheap double-sided... tape. I put that in there and then I, I don't know if I did with this one. Yeah. Then I, on a sewing machine, I sewed both the plastic bits with that double-sided tape inside it and I sew, sewed it all the way around. And then that's not even duct tape, that's just cloth tape. Duct tape would be better. And I put that on there and I had a little flap. And I've got a um, I'll show you the valve I use, which is over on the other one. Now, the other one that I made is slightly different and, and I believe, more refined. It's made out of, as I said the other day, some aerospace um, material that I have no idea what it's called or where to get it. Uh, another... Friend, woodworking friend of mine, furniture maker Richard Vaughan, had it. And he said, mate, get onto this stuff. You can't rip it. You, you pull it as hard as you can and it will not rip. Um, let me just put this over here. And this is the valve that I've got. I hope you can see that because I can't. Let me see if I can. I'll just go back to the screen and see if you can see what I'm looking at. No, you can't. There you go, okay. So this is the valve that I, cords and cables I use. Again, I don't know where you get them from. You just go to a, a fitting place. I'm sure they'd have them. And it's, you pull that up. 
I think you pull that up to release it. Or do you push it down to release it? Oh, you push it down to release it. It's just got a brass union in there and fluted, fluted base on it so the air can um, escape and it won't act as a, su as a suction cup. This board was just a piece of plywood that I put over the saw, random cuts, it doesn't matter. All you've got to do is make sure you've got avenues for the air to get out. And then, let's see if we can get something. There you go, this will do. No, it won't. Bada -bum, bada -bum. And um, I'm trying to find something I can put in there. Oh, dear, here we go. If you can, you put that on top of your job and that'll suck it all out. Or with all these cuts, you can have it to one side and I'll make a very quick seal. I won't clamp this. I'll just hold it. So I've wound that up, get the other end of my tube, pull that up, put the tube in, push that down, and then you just turn it on and it will suck all the air out and along these cuts here, if there's any air underneath the job you're doing it's going to remove that as well. Now obviously if I was doing a job I'd flatten these out. Now, I haven't clamped this so we could get a bit of air leakage. And that's as easy or as hard as it gets. With well, something else. Oh yeah, what I did with this one, which was different, is I used double-sided carpet tape, which is a lot stronger. And same thing, I put double-sided carpet tape either side. And... I might have, yeah, I think that's Gorilla Tape, clear Gorilla Tape. So I joined them together using um, double-sided carpet tape, which is very strong, then rolled it over on itself to create a seal, and then that's clear Gorilla Tape on the outside, which is as tough as, and that's it. Very, very simple. So that that's the upmarket one, or the... The other version is just a real cheap double-sided tape sewn together with uh, not even gaffer tape, just cloth tape. And for the seals, all I use is a piece of wood, roll up the end so it's clamped against each other, put that down and then two or three Bessie clamps, Bessie clamps on that and that holds it. As I said before, my, my um, vacuum pump is just one out of a dental steriliser and it doesn't have a whole facility, whereas if you buy a purpose-built vacuum pump for woodwork, they actually have a pressure differential switch in them, so if the pressure does drop, they will kick in and bring that vacuum back down and also they have a bleed valve which stops it from... Um, leaking out, whereas mine doesn't. As soon as I turn it off, in most cases, the vacuum will leak out. So I hope that helps, Mike. I hope that helps. Oh, a lot smaller than the big jobs, yes. 
Not that good, Micah. Yeah, look, you can use almost anything. All right. Oh, let me just see something. Um, yeah, what was I going to do? Oh, hang on, let's, let's see. I don't know. I'm getting all anxious now. We might be going too fast, but see if this is glued. If, it, if it's stuck in there. It's meant to in 10 minutes, it says. Uh, Joints should fit tightly, apply spread and glue, clamp for a minimum of 30 minutes. Oh, it hasn't been 30 minutes yet, but we'll see. We'll see. Worst case scenario, as it pops out, you've got to put it back in again. Whoop. I think that's holding. That's come away there, but we might be all right. No. Going to put a little bit more glue under that. Just because we'll speed this on. If I can find any super glue, I'll put a touch of super glue on it. Here we go. Ooh. Sounds a bit funny. Okay. I'll sit here and talk for a bit while that super glue's going off. Hey, Eagle Nest! Oh, Eagle Nest wooden pottery. Well, lovely to have you in the shop. It's, it's nice to get new people. Ah, my finger's stuck now. Nice people in. Good to get people in. Nice people. I've super glued my fingers. Huh? I'm just filling in um, thing here a bit. There we go. Oh, that's good, Eagle Nest. Thanks. Okay, that seems to be holding. So we'll just see. We will just see. Oh, no, no guarantees this could be a horrible thing that happens. But we will try. All I'm going to do here is I am taking off the veneer that's sticking up above the box. It's really good if you can go downhill so you're not going uphill, which will rip the veneer out, which we don't want. This is going a bit cranky. Let's see if we can go all three. I'll bring this one around. This is another, another benefit of having tools that are always sharp. <laughs> uh. 
because you can pick them up and confidently use them. It's funny, with this bit of inlay, people don't notice it until you point it out, <clears throat> but if it wasn't in there, they'd notice something was missing. Now you can, if you want, you could sand this very carefully with a sanding block. I personally prefer pairing it off like this. Gives me a little bit more control and also I'm not worrying it in the joint. Whereas when you're sanding, you're going backwards and forwards all the time. I will sand when I get down to almost the top of the box. This also is an advantage of a big pairing chisel so I can go all the way around without, if I was, I could most likely do it with a smaller chisel. Let me see. Yeah, you see here, I ran out of space, so then I've got to come around and I can't get behind the grain. I've got to come from the sideways in a shearing action, which, look, it's still okay, but hey, if you've got the tools, why not use them? Now, I'm not going to push past that point because that's where the join is. Oh, I just remembered, Louise. I'm going to, I'll have to go up to the wood turning shed because that's where the... Oh, I might have some plaster of Paris down here. I know I've got a big bag of it up in the other shed. Yes, there is an element of stress attached to this because I know what can happen if it snags. Okay. Very, very close. Cranky grain there, I could feel it starting to run offline, so I've come pretty close to getting it all down. I'll do a couple more passes. back in. So this really should have been left for a little bit longer but ah. Uh, the show must go on. I'm doing, I can't see that grain, but I'm just, if 
basically feeling what the tool's doing. And as soon as I feel it's starting, there's resistance, I know that it's going the wrong way. So then I pull back. Okay. I reckon that's good enough. We can bit of hundred grit. Sanding disc with plywood back. And I'm gonna use the plywood back because I want a flat edge to go there. Just very, very light pressure. I'm not trying to get it all off in one go. I just want to get it down to the level of the rest of the box. Okay, now that's down to that level. Several ways we can approach this. To get the paper off, we can just use a cabinet scraper, one of these. I'm not going to do the whole lot like this. The reason is that glue is still a little bit wet. But there you go. It's taken it off and you can start to see the dog coming up. I'm actually going to do this with a sander because the glue is a bit wet and any pressure with a sharp edge can dig in and causes a bit of drama while it's wet. If the glue was dried, absolutely no problem whatsoever. We'd be laughing. Here we go. The big reveal. mentioned how much I hate that paper, haven't I? Let, let me find some decent paper. Paper gone. Ah, here we go. Looks like I'm stuck with that horrible stuff. Be so pleased when I finished it all. This is a hundred grit because the um, high glue is still a little bit tacky. Mm -hmm. 
And there he is. I'll put a little bit of oh, metho on it. So you can see the colour come up. And there he is, one little happy dog. So what we'll do is any of these little um, lines that haven't quite sealed or if we've got any gaps in there, I will put some plaster in it and I'll show you how to do that and then tomorrow we'll wipe it off and you'll see a magic transformation. I reckon he's quite cute. Be back in a tick. I'll just go up to the other shed and grab some plaster. Okay, so I've got some plaster here. And maybe a container, yep. So plaster Paris, you don't need much. Now, if I'm in a hurry, I actually mix this with alcohol and it goes off a lot quicker. But because we won't be able to do that today, I'm just looking at that bit there, we're going to get a bit of something 
coming through there. Now what are that? Where's my other glasses? Give us a look. No, better. Paper still. There we go. get that out later. So <clears throat> where we've got very fine cracks or gaps where we didn't fill it all, let me just get a spatula of some sort, oh, not a pencil will do just fine. Mix up plaster. Then what you do is get a rag. Here, Louise, this is what you wanted, isn't it? Step that in there, and then little circ circular motions. All the way around it. If you want, you can actually go to where you put that border into. You can do the whole box lid if you want. And what that's doing, it's pushing plaster down into any gaps that you may have left with a knife or in our case when I was burning, I did lose um, some definition because the veneer caught light. Then you just go all the way around it like that until it's nice and smooth on top. Now you leave that, and we'll leave that till tomorrow, and you watch it bounce, pop, and explode when I do one more step to it. But that's it, that's our little dog. Where are we going? Oh, where are we up to? Let me go back 10 minutes at least. Mm. Um, -da -da Eagle Pottery came in. Welcome to the chat room. Good night all night, Wes. Hope things work out for you, mate. Steve, thanks for answering that about superglue. What did I answer about superglue? Yeah, if you're new and you like it, please hit the subscribe button and notifications I'm on every day while lockdown lasts. And I really don't know what I'm going to do when lockdown's over because I'll, I'll be in the mood for streaming and I'll have no one to stream to. Eggs. There you go. Back again. Oh, I had to answer work. Oh, how dare they interrupt James? Absolutely. Yeah, bum nuts. It, that's it. We all know what bum nuts are. Watch me making pasta. I used them. Oh, now I've wet that so that can stay there. Oh, dear. 
Oh, I think I, I think if I move that right out of the way, I'm going to make a concerted effort to tidy the workshop up today sometime so I can find the floor. And I might even find the spare bit from my marking gauge. You never know your luck in the big city. Well, there's a couple of um, tools as well you can make for marquetry that you might not have thought you needed. Um... So, uh, James, I may have missed it, but wouldn't a scarf scraper say, oh, I've seen Steve sand through veneer. Yes, um, a yeah, card scrape is good, but the reason I didn't use that in this instance because the glue's not dry. And the glue not being dry means the veneer underneath was soggy. And if I dig d dug in with a scraper, I'd pull a chunk of veneer out. But normally if it was dry, yes, I would. Yeah, John, every chance in the world something bad would happen. Yeah, I like the red tongue. That came up nicely. Well, yeah, I know, we slipped over time, but I wanted to get that finished because Louise wanted to know about the, 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 the plaster Paris thingy so I can show you how it looks tomorrow. Too late, someone's mentioned it. See you, Randy. Is that what, is that how it kicked off yesterday? <laughs> Andy, I can't remember. Oh dear, oh dear. Hi Roscoe, well we popped in, I'm just about to pop out. I'm just catching up on the chat. Yeah, well it made no difference to me either really, uh, Eagle Nest, I just come down here and potter anyway. A week more in the, in the UK. Well, there you go. We've hit 40 today. Did I mention that at the beginning of the stream? 40 days straight. I did too because I said we, well, by the time we, tomorrow we would have knocked Noah off his perch. 40 days and 40 nights. We've done 40 days of streaming and dreaming and not much screaming. So it's been good. All right. Well, I'll be here tomorrow. But right now, that's it. Got to that stage. Um, I'll show you what to do next tomorrow. And we can move on, which is, I don't know what we'll do. We'll do something. So anyway, this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself, be kind to each other, stay healthy, and follow the rules. That's all you can do. It's the best thing to do. And I look forward to having your company in, yeah, it'll be this workshop because I can't stream for wood turning at the moment. I'm waiting for a new ADSL cable to turn up and when I go up to the house, I'm going to order a new convection, what are those things called? Um, <laughs> what are they? Induction. Is it induction? Induction stove so I can get my glue going again. And tomorrow, first job off, we'll take all the plaster off of that and put a lick of oil on it and it will blow your mind. It'll look lovely. So that's it. Thank you all the mods. Thank you for everyone that joined in. As I said before, if you would, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And the notifications. I'll be here at 10 o'clock Australian Easter Standard Time from Queensland to do whatever. I don't know. We'll do it all again, only differently. That's all I can say. All right. Stay safe. God bless. Thanks to everybody out there. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.